and they're off. Well, kind of, folks. That's just, that's what we could do on our budget. Here we are at the Legacy Studios, as promised. Let me catch my breath. What a day it has been. We're about ready to do a little handicapping with Dave Pasquale, who will also be on the Coons Market Black and Gold Sunday show with Ted Arnaud right after the new news from CBS. But McDonald's, they've got one here in Calcutta. And I read earlier today at the uh, CBS Radio and Television website about McDonald's and Uber Eats. Already Phoenix, Chicago, Los Angeles, they are there. But soon, for five bucks, Uber will bring you your McDonald's fries and burgers. They're going to be heading to Tampa and Miami. So excited about that. And by the way, right now, any size soft drink and that refreshing Coca-Cola at a McDonald's near you, one dollar. David, always dreaming is the favor. Take us through the field and give us some of your comments. It's the second leg of horse racing's Triple Crown, the Preakness Stakes, this weekend. Good evening. Good evening, Rob. Nice to be with you. Yeah, obviously, uh, uh, always dreaming deserves uh, his recognition as the odds-on favorite. He's uh, he's in at uh, morning line four to five, and uh, deservedly so. He he uh, was pretty impressive in the Kentucky Derby, although uh, his finishing times uh, were not that impressive. He finished the Derby on a quarter in two o three and three fifths of a second, uh, which is pretty slow. He, he, he kind of looked dominant. With, uh, dominating in, uh, uh, but in actuality, they ran the last three quarters of a mile in a minute and 17 seconds. And again, that's uh, that's kind of walking home. Uh, the track have something to do with that, and yeah, probably uh, maybe a little bit. But uh, always dreaming uh, wasn't getting any uh, any throwback in his face either. He had kind of a dream trip. Uh, he might have trouble this time uh, uh, beating off a horse. Uh, uh, was called Conquest Love Money, who did not run in the uh, in the Kentucky Derby. Conquest Love Money uh, finished second to Ar- in the Arkansas Derby to Classic Empire, and he did it with uh, with some authority. He he ran a tremendous race uh, in Arkansas, and he'll be challenging uh, at least he'll be challenging always dreaming at least to the three eighths pole, and maybe even a little bit further. Uh, I don't think he has enough uh, pace to uh, to outpace uh, always dreaming to the wire, but. I think he probably might take something out of him. And you know me, I, I, uh, I'm always looking for, uh, for a long shot, and I, I am in this race, this is no exception. And if the race uh, does set up with slow fractions, it'll, it'll be difficult for the closers to advance on uh, front runners, and, most, and without a doubt, I think uh, always dreaming will be a front runner. Hey, and if they run that half, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, because of the field being so small and the short turnaround since the Derby, this can be a very taxing race. And you were talking about long shots. What's up with this cloud computing 12 to 1? Does that make you scratch your head a little bit? Well, it does. Not only that, though, but uh, the thing that makes me have to scratch my head a little bit more is the fact that uh, uh, Javier Castellano, who is one of the premier jockeys in the country, uh, got off of Benavera, uh, who was highly regarded going into the Derby, and chose to ride cloud computing. He's only had three races. He's got to win a place and a show uh, in his three races. And, uh, you know, nothing really stands out about that horse uh, uh, that would make him be uh, um, uh, 12 to 1 uh, in the morning line. And you know, I, I get very very puzzled by the fact that Javier Castellano chose that horse over Gunnamera. That surprises me, and I'll tell you, it surprises me to the extent that I probably I probably will use that horse uh, in uh, in the Preakness, uh, along with some others, of course. But uh, but uh, I had not considered uh, cloud computing until uh, Castellano chose. Uh, and the thing about the thing about cloud computing, not only Castellano like, but uh, the uh, the trainer likes him as well. Uh, and uh, obviously, Chad Brown's a trainer, and he's, he's a very good trainer. He likes him, and uh, and the odds makers like him. You know, so uh, who am I to um, to argue or disagree with the uh, with the, the odds makers, the trainer, and the jockey? Uh, so you know, I'll be I'll be using him. Multiplier is another one that uh, intrigues me a little bit. Uh, he's another lightly raced horse. He only has three races, uh, uh, or four races, and of those four, he's won two, has a second and a third. And the thing about Multiplier that uh, intrigues me more is the fact that he is one of only two horses in this race that have run a mile and an eighth under 148, a minute and 48 seconds. And the other one to do that was Always Dreaming. He did it in the uh, Florida Derby. And, of course, it was very impressive. So, uh, you know, although he'll be, he'll be a long shot, he's, 
running line 30 to 1, and I think he'll probably, he may go up from there. Uh, but I like him. I like him, and that's, that's another horse that I'm, I'm going to be, I'm going to be using, uh, most certainly. Um, after, after those horses, I, I like Tench in the, uh, in the Kentucky Derby. He got a, he got a bad trip, and, uh, uh, it, it, he, uh, he ended up, I believe Hintz ended up, uh, I don't know, he's about 10th row. Yeah, he's 11th. He finished 11th, I believe. Still, with a bad trip, uh, I still like him. I, I also like, uh, uh, classic Empire in this race. You know, he was, uh, he was, uh, highly regarded in the Derby. It got slammed coming out of the gate, uh, after he got hit and bumped coming out of the gate, he then got hurted by, uh, uh, Caprit, I believe it was, that herded him into uh, other horses in the center of the track. And then when he uh, made his stretch run, he got completely knocked off stride when he was making his advance, and he still managed to pass horses and get bored. So, uh, you know, I like Classic uh, Empire in this race as well, and he is one that I'll be probably using on top along with uh, Multiplier and uh, and not Cloud Computing. I'll use Cloud Computing later on, either second, third, or fourth. But, uh, uh, Classic Empire and uh, um, Multiplier will be um, at least two of the horses I will play on top. All right, just remember, uh, just remember as we say goodbye, it's, it's, I know Classic Empire 3 to 1 right now as of today, and that's the horse that they think will be a close second behind Always Dreaming, the favorite. But something keeps telling me, looking at Lee, looking at Lee. I'm going to let you close on that horse, and then we'll say goodnight. Dave Pasquale on the AT&T Sports Line at Legacy Studios talking about the Preakness, the second leg of horse racing's Triple Crown this Saturday. Looking at Lee, what do you think, Dave? Yeah, looking at Lee, uh, you know, I loved him in the Derby, and uh, he made a nice closing run. Uh, came in, he cut the corner on the, on the stretch turn and came up the rail and finished a strong second. Uh he will be, uh, he'll be coming from way back. He probably will be uh, either last or next to last uh, by the clubhouse turn and probably stay there uh, down the back stretch. But uh, he'll, make, he'll make some advance uh, uh, later in the race, probably around the three-eighths pole. However, you know, uh, deep closers have trouble at, uh, at Pimlico, and uh, uh, I don't think he's going to allow himself enough time to get there. He may get uh, third or fourth, I think, but I don't think he has enough, to, enough time to get there. Uh, in time to uh, to win the race, but I think he he has a chance to, to be a part of the exotics. All right, listen, you don't have to say another word. This is all me, but Dave is from New Brighton. It's where I grew up, and many years ago, after a play-by-play -play basketball game, and yes, I was close to 30 years of age, as was my friend Ed Mullivan and I. We stopped off at a convenience store where you could actually buy fine wine and spirits long before, yes, other places that are doing it now, such as your Sheets convenience store selling beer in Calcutta and wine. And I said, so what's the MD stand for? He said, Mad Dog. I said, MD 2020. What's it all about? He said, try some and get back to me in about a half hour. So ladies and gentlemen, fine wine and spirits. And as I howled at the moon that night, be responsible. But if you're looking for something a little different, and yes, this is always your Pratt Pack's budget. <laughs> That's where I am now in the pecking order, ladies and gentlemen. Please stop in one of your fine wine and spirit stores and pick up the all new Electric Melon just in time for the summer season. MD 2020. Now that is the way to roll. And for my buddy James Tarpley from Clareton, who's living in Arizona, who's watching this, he and I know that MD 2020, it's all good in our hood. Good night from Legacy Studios, talking NFL with Ted Arnaud, next.